Holy Spirit spoke back to me and he said, everything, everything started with a word. Everything. Sure you've read, I'm very sure you've read Genesis 1. God said, let. Everything started with a word. We worship God because of a word. Jesus died for us because of a word. We are blessed because of a word. We're saved because of a word. Every single thing that you see, everything that you have experienced started with a word. And so, with that being said, the Holy Spirit said today that God has a word that is going to revolutionize your life. Now, I know that's cliche-ish, but some of us need a revolution. We need something brand new. We need a brand new direction, a brand new everything. Lord, if you take away all of what I currently have and you just give me everything brand new, I'd be happy. Some people are just in that place. Father, I don't mind starting over. If starting over is going to be better than what I'm experiencing now. I will start over for the better. But most of us in here, the testimony is, no, I done learned some stuff and I done accumulated some stuff that I don't want to let go because I've gotten wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from it. So I don't need a, 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 a do-over, but Lord, just from where I am, show me where to go. Just give me a word. Just give me a word. The Holy Spirit is speaking to me right now, and he's saying, okay, this is a, now, for those who, who may not know, I, I do a, a, basically a television, online television program called Supernatural Insights. Now, I'm about to give you a supernatural insight right now that I've never, ever, ever, ever heard before. Never heard before. Holy Spirit just said to me, Often we ask God, you know, bless us with this, bless us with that, bless us with the other. But, and now, now he's giving me the scripture to go with it. So I don't know now whether to do the scripture first or the revelation first. I'll do the revelation and give you scriptural background. He said, if you're praying about something and you're asking God for something and it seems as if it's not happening, stop asking God at that point. Stop asking God, Lord, give me this, give me that, give me the other. Say, Lord, speak a word to this. Speak a word to this situation. I ask you to do it this way, I ask you to do it that way, and I've been believing, believing, nothing is happening. So evidently, my words aren't the way you want to do it. So Father, I come back before you again as if I never came before you about this situation. You know the situation, speak a word to it. If you speak a word, it'll be perfect. This isn't even what I'm preaching this morning, but this is what I'm preaching this morning. (laughs) And you know, in the word of God, there was a centurion that came to Jesus, long story short, And he said, listen, I'm a man under authority, so I know the type of authority you have. You don't even have to come to heal my servant. You don't have to to go to where I live. Just speak a word, and my servant will be made whole. Father, this is the situation. Speak a word. Child, why do you want me to speak a word? Oh, God, you must... I know you're kidding, right? You know, I know what happens when you speak a word. You remember, let every light and boom, let it be fish, boom. If you speak a word, it has to happen. That's all all I want you to do is just speak a word. If he doesn't do that, what do we even have faith in? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. I challenge you to go beyond the Bible. What? How dare you say that and you're a preacher. Go beyond the Bible. 
Lazy people stick with the Bible. Oh, I got attention now. <laughs> they get one scripture and they say, Lord, I just speak this scripture over this situation. Nothing happens. You're too lazy to go in prayer and say, God, now I know this is what you said, but I want to know what are you saying yes. now. Yes. We're too lazy to stay before God until we get a word from him. That I need to know specifically the word that you are going to speak to my situation or else how can I put faith in anything if I don't know what you're going to do? Lord, what are you going to do? We think God doesn't want to answer prayers like that. We think we just have to just Keep on going and say, Lord, I just know you're going to work it out somehow. You're too lazy to go and find out what the somehow is. God wants to reveal things like that to us. Jesus lived like that. Paul lived like that. You can live just like that. Father, how, how are you going to do this now? Because I don't know. There's nothing else I can do. How are you going to do this? Let me know. Then I'll put faith in that. I need a word. Stop giving God these three and four minute times of prayer every morning. And that's about all he gets from you. Then before you get to bed, you might give him seven minutes. 24 hours. God can't even get a good 20 minutes from you. No wonder you're confused and don't know what's going to happen with your life. You don't spend enough time with the life giver. My life is just mismanaged because you don't know the manager. Oh, I could go on and on and on and on. Things sound good to us and we say things that sound good to us. But God said, I heard what you said but there was no heart in it, no heart. You know, a lot of us talk to God from right here, right here, Amen. the brain, that's where we talk to him from. Because we're thinking about it, we're thinking about it, and we're thinking about it, and so we talk straight from there, and God's like, there's no heart there. There's, there's no faith. All this is just brain, brain. I've been thinking about it, thinking about it, and so and then you, you, you say, oh my goodness, I'm doing all this thinking. I ain't even prayed yet. And so you pray straight from where you've been thinking. And there's no word there. There's no word. And so then you pray according to what you've been thinking and then you're looking for what you've been thinking. And when you don't see what you've been thinking, you go back to thinking that God hadn't heard you. Or you go back to thinking, when is it gonna happen? Is it gonna happen? Is God gonna do it? Too much thinking, thinking, thinking. It's, it's just no heart. Amen. You know, whenever the prophet went to anoint the king of Israel, went to Jesse's house, and Eliab and all the other boys, he, he, he took the horn of oil and was about to anoint, and God said, no, 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 no. Just because he's the biggest and the strongest, that doesn't mean that's who I choose. He told the prophet, he said, listen, man looks at the outward appearance. Yes. I ponder the heart. That should have been a clue to us right there. Yeah. God looks at my heart. Yeah. So I need to focus in on my heart. What goes in the heart? Thy word have I hid in my heart. It's about the word. I'm telling you, it's about the word. How can I hide something if I don't have it? Yeah. If I don't have the word about how you're going to do this, I have nothing to hide in my heart. Amen. That word that I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. How am I sinning against you? Because if I don't hide your word in my heart, then I'm going to put my word there and I'm going to act according to my will, not your will. All of this is what he is saying right now. 
Now, we have an opportunity to know exactly the atmosphere that's going on in heaven, the atmosphere of heaven. Last year, God not only revealed the atmosphere, last week rather, he didn't only reveal the atmosphere of heaven, but even more specified, the atmosphere of the throne room where God and Jesus actually sit in authority. With the revelation that God gave us that was just absolutely phenomenal last week, the Holy Spirit said to me, you, you, you can't just move on from that and just say, okay, that was good, now listen, something like that, you, you, you have to spend a little time with it. So I want to revisit it, and then there's some, some more layers that the Holy Spirit peeled off for us that we're gonna see today. So this is what is Jesus doing now, part two. What? is Jesus doing now? Yeah, we know what he did, but what is he doing now? 1 John 2, verses 1 and 2, and I'm, I'm, I'm really going to try to rush through this, but if you want it in a slower pace and, and, and more broken down, more elaborated, please go to youtube.com slash feast of the Lord and you can see the entire sermon from last week. It's, it's much more elaborated than what I'm gonna do today just for the sake of time. youtube.com slash feast of the Lord. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not and if any man sin. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Advocate means universally one who pleads another's cause with one, an intercessor. So of Christ in his exaltation at God's right hand, pleading with God the Father for the pardon of our sins. That's what that word means in the Greek, chaldee which is an original language of the word of God in the New Testament. That's an advocate. I'm pleading, Jesus, pleading with God the Father on our behalf. He's an advocate. First John 2, verses 2. And he is a propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world and we learned last week that propitiation means the appeasing calming of God's anger which restored and still restores man's relationship back to God this is the atmosphere of the throne room on a consistent basis. Why did Jesus need to appease, calm God's anger? Malachi 4, verses 5 and 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children in the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And of course, last week I, I talked about the fact that he wasn't talking about actual Elijah, but he was talking about John the Baptist who was to come. So now this sixth verse of Malachi of the fourth chapter is literally the proclaimed end of the, New, of the Old Testament. End of the claimed Old Testament, followed by 400 years of God not speaking to anyone on earth. After this verse, 400 years, God spoke to no one on earth. And Jesus continues to be the reason we can still hear from God today. 
The last thing, the last thing God said before he was absolutely silent for 400 years is if this doesn't happen, I will smite the earth with a curse. The whole earth. Let's go all the way back to the top. This is why Jesus had to appease, calm God's anger. Matthew 24, verses 30 and 31. Let's look at this. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Mm, mm, mm. What is that? And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Why, 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 why? All the tribes, all the tribes of the earth? I guess we would be the American tribe. All the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Goodness gracious, one day we're going to all look up and literally see Jesus coming on a cloud. But why are they going to mourn? We'll talk about it. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other around the globe, around the globe. No matter what happens now in terms of the sun, there is some place right now on earth where the sun is completely not visible. But you know this definitely has to be a sight. For when Jesus comes back, everybody will be able to see him. Everybody. We can't all see the S-U-N at the same time, but we will see the capital S-O-N at the same time. Then Mark says in, in his account of the same declaration that Jesus made, Jesus said this as well, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man. Nobody knows. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the son, talking about himself, but the father. Only God knows when Jesus is coming back. The angels don't know, and they're there worshiping him 24-7, and they have no clue. Jesus is the only begotten son of God. Jesus said, I don't even know when I'm coming back. Only the Father knows. Why is that? Again, looking at the atmosphere of the throne room. Jesus know the angels know the day, know the hour. And the reason for that is because of the revelation God gave us last week by the vision that the Lord showed me while I was just standing right over there. Literally showed me the vision of the throne room because of Jesus' position to propitiate, to calm God on our behalf before God he doesn't know the point when God will be weary with repenting, ceasing to be appeased, causing him to tell Jesus that it's time for his second coming. So the atmosphere of heaven is Jesus pleading with God, interceding, interceding. God is here and, and, and Jesus is at his right hand pleading, pleading with God, pleading with him and, and interceding on our behalf and appeasing his anger, calming it. One of the Greek definitions is also to pacify God. And Jesus is ever doing this for us, ever. But one day, at one split second, God is going to say, Jesus, 
No more interceding. No more appeasing me. No more calming me. Go back. That will be his second coming. That's the atmosphere of the throne room. That's why Jesus said, I don't know the day nor the hour. I don't know when, I don't know how long I can hold him back. I don't know how long I can hold back his anger. I don't know how long I can keep him calm. I don't know how long I can be the propitiation. I don't know how long I can intercede for you. Because one day God is gonna say, it is enough return how can God get weary with repenting for the judgment that he wants to pass one day God will get weary with repenting I'm going to do it no 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 please father please not now not now okay I won't do it I won't do it Continue, continue. Nope, this is it. Please, Father, okay, I won't do it. God will get weary with repenting for saying, I'm gonna do it, and then saying, okay, I won't do it. I changed my, I will not do it. Okay, well, Jeremiah 15, 6. Thou hast forsaken me, saith the Lord. Thou art gone backward. Therefore, I will stretch out my hand against thee and destroy thee. I am weary with repenting. For those who needed scripture. I am weary. I'm going to stretch out my hand against you and I'm going to destroy you. I'm tired of saying I'm going to do it and then you do something and then I say, okay. I won't do it. Then I say, I'm going to do it. I'm weary. I'm tired of saying I'm going to do it. And then because of my goodness, I repent and say, I'm weary with repenting. God gets tired of saying, I'm going to kill him. No, 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 no. Please don't. Please don't. Because you ask, I won't now. I'm going to get him. No, 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 no. Father, please, please, please. Because you ask. But soon. He's going to be weary. He's going to be tired. Please, Father, not this time. I'm not going to repent this time. Go. But, Father, no, Father, go. Weary literally means exhausted patience. Exhausted patience. This world is exhausting the patience of God Almighty. In the original Hebrew, weary literally just simply means exhausted patience. God is going to say, my patience has now been exhausted. I have literally no more patience with you. But I feel so discouraged. I feel so depressed. I feel... I have no more patience. Jesus, go. I'm done. They sin, do it again. Sin, do it again. Get slack, do it again. Get slack, do it again. And I keep forgiving, keep forgiving, keep forgiving. This is it. I'm done. I'm exhausted. My patience have been exhausted. They have used every bit of the patience that I, God Almighty, have. They've been exhausting my patience for thousands of years. How long can Jesus hold back God? How long can Jesus appease us? And our own wanting of mercy and grace. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Scripture even says, God the Father said, I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy. It's my choice. I'll have mercy on whoever I want to have mercy on. I'm God. And all of my decisions and all of my judgments are righteous. Every one of them. Repenting means move to pity. Have compassion for others. God said, no more. 
no more. I'm weary with being moved to, I, I, I don't even pity you anymore. I don't even have compassion on you anymore. You've exhausted my patience. It's like the boy who cried wolf, kept crying wolf, and everybody come out to see what's going on. Cry wolf again, everybody come out. Then last time he cried wolf, nobody came, and the wolves got him. How is Jesus able, legally, to propitiate for us? You know, God is a, is a God of structure. He's king. Amen. Yeah. And in the earth, there needed to be someone who could calm God. But it had to, it had to be legally done in lineage because God is all about order. All about order. So let's, let's look at this, and then I'm gonna come with, with a, a, a little more information. Hebrews 7, 21 through 25. For those who formerly became priests received their office without its being confirmed by the taking of an oath by God. But this one, speaking of Jesus, was designated and addressed and saluted with an oath. The Lord has, has sworn and will not regret or change his mind. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, speaking of Jesus Christ himself. Now, Jesus did not come from the lineage of Aaron. So he could not, he was king. And as Saul found out, because Samuel told him, um, going Old Testament now, Samuel, the prophet, who did come from the uh, Aaronic lineage, told Saul, listen, when I come, you wait seven days, and when I come, then I'll make the offering, because only the priests can do sacrifices. Kings cannot. Only the priests. Jesus, being perfect, never, ever, ever had to make a sacrifice before God for his own sins. But he himself was the sacrifice for our sins. Even so doing, we have to look at it in reality, Jesus did sacrifice himself. He could not do that unless he was a priest. He didn't sacrifice a lamb or a bullock, but he still sacrificed himself. That is why God said way over in, in uh, Psalms that you will be my priest forever. According to the order of Melchizedek. When Moses created the law, not just the Ten Commandments, but when he created the law, that is when we knew only the priests could do sacrifices. But Melchizedek was a priest way before Moses was even born. Melchizedek received tithes from our father Abraham. because he was a priest. And it is said that the one who blesses is greater than the one receiving the blessing. So Melchizedek was greater than Abraham because Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek, who was in Abraham's loins Aaron, who was in Abraham, Abraham's loins, Levi, 
who started the Levitical, Levi, Levitical priesthood. So therefore, it's as if the priesthood blessed Melchizedek. Because Melchizedek was greater than the priest, and he himself was priest. So that is how Jesus, coming from the order of Melchizedek, could literally give himself as a sacrifice. Which is very important, or else he could not be at the right hand of the Father making intercession and appeasing him because Jesus gave himself as the perfect sacrifice. So that is the grounds, that's how Jesus is able to propitiate for us. Because if he had not come from that lineage, there is no way in the world he could do that and then God could literally curse the earth as he said in Malachi 4 and 6. God set everything up to come down the right line so we could get every single thing we needed. Amen. Now, verse 22, in keeping with the oath's greater strength and force, Jesus has become the guarantee of a better, stronger agreement. A more excellent and more advantageous covenant. Oh, man, I could kind of go on and on. Why did he have to have a new order of priesthood if, if the old order was pleasing to God? Again, the former successive line of priests was made up of many because they were each prevented by death from continuing perpetually in office. They died. So when you die, you can no longer appease God with a sacrifice because that priest, that human being has died. They were prevented from making further appeasement to God because they were prevented by death from continuing perpetually in office because they died. Just in case you wanted to know what Jesus is doing now. But he, Jesus, holds his priesthood unchangeably because he lives on forever. Forever. But you thought after Jesus died and rose and went to heaven, he was done. You thought he was done. Lives on forever. All the other priests died. And you know, I know that there are Catholics out and, and, and they go to the priest and the priest tells them what to do. That day is done, gone forever. Huh. Jesus is the one. We go straight to Jesus. I don't have to go to no man and say, tell me what to do to get forgiven. Jesus is the great high priest. Therefore, woo, he is able also to save to the uttermost. Completely, perfectly, finally, and for all time and eternity. Those who come to God through him. And see, that's the thing. All these other off religions that I always talk about, they don't want to have nothing to do with Jesus. Jesus, he was not the son of God. Uh, God ain't had no sons. And yeah, I believe, I believe Jesus was just a man. You know, they got this doggone Egyptian foolishness religions that a whole bunch of uh, people are following just as stupid as they can be. Oh, Jesus was just a man. 
Well, he was a prophet, but that's about it. Really? You got people saying, Jesus ain't the only way to God. Really? I have a relationship with God. I ain't got to get saved to talk to God. Really? Have you ever read John 9, 31? Write it down just in case somebody ever say that to you. John 9, 31. Now we know God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of him and doeth his will, him he heareth. I ain't saved, no, I ain't saved, but I still pray. No, you still talk. You still talk. God doesn't hear sinners. It's in the word of God, he doesn't. How can God hear a sinner? God is all powerful. He can hear anything. No, we're not talking about to hear as in the reverberations of your uh, uh, vocal cords. I'm talking about hearing in terms of, oh, I hear my son, I'm going to do something about what he said. Oh, I hear my daughter, I'm going to do something about what she said. No, 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 no. Of course, God hears every thought, knows everything going on, but it doesn't move him if you're a sinner. It doesn't move him. You may not like what I do, but I still talk to God. Ooh, another vision. (laughs) No, this is a light one, okay? (laughs) Have you ever been talking to somebody who's watching TV? I mean, you really talking to them, and they literally don't hear a single thing you're saying? That's exactly how God is. I hear it but I don't really hear it. In other words, you have not gotten my attention at all. Something else has my attention. That's exactly how God is for those who are saying, well, I mean, you know, this is just me. I still talk to God, but and God knows my heart. Yeah, that's why you're going to hell. But the point is, he's not hearing you. And you know what? You don't even have to believe me. You really don't. You can keep doing whatever you're doing and thinking God is it. You don't have to believe me. But I tell you what, when you stand before Jesus Christ on that throne, it's going to be too late to say, okay, Jesus, okay, I'll give you my life. And it's too late. It's too late. Wow. Holy Spirit just said to me, covenant is over. I never heard that before. Holy Spirit said, covenant is over at that point. You can't get saved in heaven because the covenant would have ended by then. I never heard that before. Jesus has a covenant with God the Father. And that is why people can get saved now. But when that covenant ends, there's no more salvation. When that covenant ends, then comes the judgment. And it's over. Save me. I can't even if I wanted to. The covenant has ended. I mean, you know if God can't be appeased by the intercession of his own son, you know that covenant is out of here. It's gone. But what I'm doing feels so good. It it helps me. It appeases me. Cool. Enjoy your earthly life because in, 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 in hell, my goodness gracious, who in the world wants to go, what the devil is good enough on earth that make you want to be in hell forever? I don't know nothing, no drug, no sex, no alcohol, no reefer. I don't know nothing that's so wonderful that I'm going to burn forever. I don't know nothing. I'm going to burn forever. Man, please, that thing ain't worth it to me. 
It ain't worth it. But you know what? Even with that said, some people are going to still go and do what they want to do. That's why the Bible says hell enlarges herself. One world technology is that, David. That, no, seriously, that is some type of technology. The Lord blesses our church and, 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 and it's like, oh, we got to put chairs down and stuff. And so this, these walls just like, go through them. Just start enlarging itself. And the parking lot out there gets larger and stretches out. That's some type of technology. Hell enlarges herself? Because so many people are going. After hearing this teaching, they'll still go. I'm t- I, I will tell any and everybody, I am scared of hell. I am. That's not my motivation for living right, though. My motivation is because I love God. I literally want God pleased. I can tell when he's not, and I don't like it at all. I don't like it. I love the fire. I don't even think about hell every day. I say that often. I don't. I don't because I'm scared of it, but it's not like that's my motivation. I don't want to go there, so I'm going to do right, Lord. No, my motivation, I want you happy. It's a relationship I have. All right. According to the order of Melchizedek, Jesus is king and priest. How in the world can that happen? You can't be a king and a priest. Yes, you can under the order of Melchizedek. That's it. What is Jesus doing now? I found something online that was talking about Melchizedek and I want to make sure I shared everything that I learned in my research. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, I think I did. Because it's just, you know, sometimes I'll do do finish the message and then the Lord showed me something else or I learned something else and I, I want to make sure y'all get every single thing. Oh yeah, yeah, all right. So now that we know who Jesus is, even more so, and I have so much more to share with you all about who Jesus actually is in terms of what he's doing right now. Isn't this amazing to see what Jesus is doing now? Stuff we never, never knew was, was actually happening, was, was actually going on. But now we can see it clearly. If you're here right now and you don't know Jesus as Savior and Lord, if you're here right now and you say, well, I used to be saved, but I left him, please come back. That we, we, we can't stay out. Can't stay out. Recess is over. Recess is over. If you've already had your playtime, you've already had recess, okay, good. You done played, you done had your fun. Just come back now. Come back to God right now. Father, I thank you so much. Thank you for how you speak to us week after week in Jesus' name. And Father, even with how you are, you are perfect love. You are literally perfect love. You have given, I will say me, you have given me chance after chance after chance after chance. I won't even say we, me. I will single my own self out. And Father, I know everyone in here can say unto you right now, you've been merciful. You've been so merciful. Father, thank you for teaching us and how you teach us and all you give us. 
Oh, Father, I just pray no one in here leaves without accepting the free gift of salvation that we don't have to sacrifice for because Jesus already did. Because he was a priest according to the order of Melchizedek. And you accept it wholeheartedly, fully. Oh, Father, you're so good to us. Thank you for what you taught us. Thank you for what you said. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you're here and you want to get saved or you want to renew your relationship with God, please come now. Please, just, I want to pray with you personally up here. Come here. Come here. I want to pray with you. Give your life to God. Give your life to him. He is ready for you. He wants you for himself. Not for nothing but for himself. And now let me say, let me, let me, let me say this. If you know that you have a particular problem, you have a particular situation in your life that is hard to get rid of and you keep sinning the same sin over and over and over and over and over and over. Somebody say, Lord, take the taste out of my mouth if it's smoking or, or Lord, do this if it's this or if you're having sex outside of marriage, I mean, Lord, uh, do this or if you just uh, uh, can't stop lying. Like it just it's so much goes on. You know, I, I'm, I'm trying to stop or I'm trying. It's no such thing as no trying to stop. This is it. This is it. We have one life. We're going to stand before Jesus Christ and that's going to be it. Jesus is king and priest. I know there are those of you in here who are going through situations. Some I know in the natural, some I know in the spirit. You're going through some situations, you're going through some, 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 some things in your mind. You're going through some hard things. Be encouraged. Jesus is king and priest. That's who we serve. We have nothing to worry about. We have nothing to fear. I preached the series years ago. What is it like having the king as your father? What is it like having the king as your father? God Almighty. I'm going to talk about this more in a future sermon, but Jesus said, All power has been given unto me all power. Jesus is king. He's king. I don't care what you're going through in your family, on your job, in your mind. It doesn't matter what you're going through even in your church. Did you know that The king is my big brother. Do you know how much he loves me? I don't have anything to fear or worry about because the king is my big brother. And my daddy is king as well. He's the the king back home because the Bible says we're just traveling through earth but that heaven is our home. So back home, my daddy's the king. If you don't know Jesus or if you need to renew, restore that relationship with him, come up. I want to pray with you. Come here. Come here. I want to pray with you. Uh, And those listening and watching as well, give your life to God. He wants you. 
If you're renewing your relationship, let this be the last time you ever have to do this. Say, I'll never have to do it again, Lord. I'm gonna keep our relationship strong. You always do your part. I'm gonna do my part. Mm, 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 mm. Watch it happen. God, God said, watch it happen. Somebody in here, you've been, you've been going through with your children. College students, if y'all, are y'all college students? Yes. If y'all leaving because of the calf, don't worry, because we always give cash so you can get your own food somewhere else. They turn around and go sit back down. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. Y'all will get cash at that last door on the left. Every college student in here, if we go past your eating time, y'all can eat anywhere you want after we give you a little, little stipend. Ain't no two dollars. It's seven dollars, so I hope that's enough to get some food. That's good. That's good. Okay, she said, yo, all right, praise God. Amen. Inflation hit, we might have to go up to eight. <laughs> Somebody said, how can you laugh and joke? Listen, this is life. Because you see what's going to happen? When, when, you, when we leave here, it ain't going to be nothing but laughing and joking anyway. And eating and all this other stuff. I don't try to scare nobody into getting saved because then you have to be scared 24-7 to stay saved. Gene Martin sang a song years ago. The same thing it took to get salvation is going to take the same thing to keep it. It's a decision. Anybody else? Mm, 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 mm. Somebody contemplate. Somebody just said in your mind, or I won't say you just said it, but I just heard it. You said, I know I'm going to still do the same thing. I know I'm going to still do the same thing. And I'm going to tell you what else you just said. Well, what else I just heard that you said. You also said, you know, I've done this before. I done came back before. I done done it before. And I still keep going back. I don't want to come up until I know, I know. After this message mm-hmm. about holding back God's anger, if, 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 if you not ready now, do you literally think you going to be ready later? What else is it to say? Jesus is coming soon. Jerusalem has been declared the capital. I mean, Bible scholars are going crazy right now with that. Going crazy. Like Jesus, he could come back and he, that's it. Jerusalem is the capital. Just go go outside and just look up. He's coming. I don't know where. Some people say in the eastern sky, he's coming back. It's literally just that close. We don't know when. Mm, 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 mm. All right. Is there anyone else before I pray? You can't sneak to Jesus, so you can't say, well, I'll just say it here in my seat. Jesus said, you're ashamed to own me on earth. I'll be ashamed to own you of my Father in heaven. So it's just up to you. Hallelujah to God. Well, you got enough of them up there? It ain't about enough of them. That's true. That's true. Hey! Hey! All right. Okay. Holy Spirit said that's it. So that's it. Those of you who are up here, lift your hands, close your eyes, and bow your heads. We lift our hands as a sign of surrender to God. We close our eyes because we don't want nothing, nobody to disturb us or distract us. And we bow our heads as a sign, a custom, as people bow in the presence of others, respecting, honoring, recognizing your presence. 
You're talking directly to God. I'm going to give you what to say, but you're talking directly to him. As Jesus is interceding and is the propitiation, appeasing, calming, pacifying God, you can talk directly to God while that's going on and he will hear every single thing you're saying. Remember from your heart, from your heart, every one of you, from your heart. So now we pray. Say, Father, I come before you right now in the name of Jesus Christ who died for me. I confess I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for living, for dying. Thank you, Father, for raising Jesus from the dead. Now raise me from the death of all my sins. Lord Jesus, I want a real relationship with you. I give you my life. Come into my heart. Live in me and live through me. You are Lord Jesus. You are Lord of all. You are Lord of my life. Father, thank you for saving me. I will live for you the rest of my days. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Those of you who are up here, lift your hands, close your eyes. While I was praying, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me, and he said, I'm going to invest the fire in them. I'm going to light it. I'm going to ignite that fire in them. And all y'all have to do is just keep it burning. Woo. Fire of God be your portion. Lord, I'm going to ask you to do this because the Holy Spirit just told me to. Father, whatever part of my relationship pleases you and I've received spiritual impartations because of my relationship with you, whatever parts of me that can bless either of those who are standing here, impart it to them as I lay hands on them. I ask this because your Holy Spirit told me to. I don't think I've ever done this ever in my entire life. Because I don't have the power to do it. Only you can facilitate this interaction, this impartation, this investment into their spirits and their spiritual lives. So I give them exactly what they need straight from you. And Father, I, I, I thank you for that which is spiritual because I can give all that I have and keep all that I have at the same time. So I thank you for the impartation and the stirring up by your fire in Jesus' name. Lift, lift him up. Lift him up. Lift, lift your hands all the way up. Crown him with it. Crown, crown, crown him with it. Crown him with it. Crown him. God told me to tell you he needs you to make firm decisions for him. He needs to make firm decisions for him and stick to them. Because God said there's a love of the world in your heart that has to come out. God said you're going to have to love him more than you do the world. And now God is saying when you look at who you are, 
You don't identify yourself with God. You identify yourself with the world and how you see them. And because of how you see them, it, it attracts you. You're attracted to what you see in the world and you want to become that. But God said, I called you out of the world. Yes. And God said, I want you for myself. God said, you've not been faithful to me, and I'm not talking about coming to church. I'm talking about after you leave here, God said, I see your secrets. I see your secrets. You have not been faithful to me. Let this be the last coming back. Give everything to him, God, that he needs in Jesus' name. And I glorify you. Every, God said, God said, skip there and come right here. And God said, everything you heard me tell him is the same thing for you. God said, I called you to preach. I called you to minister. God said, I hold you to a higher standard and yet you still leave me. You still leave me. God said, you used to love our closeness. You used to love our time. God said, but now it's a struggle for you to even come back to me. Because the world has your ears, the world has your eyes. And you've given the world your heart. Yes, I heard your prayer today. Yes, I see you standing humbly before me. But God said, you have to make a decision and stick to it before I can impart to you. Make it now. Make it now. Make it now. Fire! Jesus' name. Father, thank you for what you're saying and what you're doing. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Lift, 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 lift him back up. Lift him back up. Where's, where's Pastor Hay? Oh, he's helping. Put your hands on his ears. Yeah. Oh, stand in front. The right... Yeah, like that. Put your hands, close your eyes. Lift your hands. All right. Lord, let him hear like a prophet's supposed to hear. Let him hear like a prophet is supposed to hear. Son, will you keep laying hands on until the Holy Spirit tells you to stop? Keep laying hands on his ears. The, 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 the other way, like, like in front. The right on, yeah, just like that. Uh, thank you for my daughter here, Lord. Give her every, close your eyes. Give her everything she needs. Everything she needs. In Jesus' name. Everything. Everything. Lift your hands, baby. Close your eyes. Father, I thank you so much for Marcy. I thank you, Father God, for her decision to come. Touch her. Anoint her. Let your power and your might be her portion. In Jesus' name. Woo. Woo. That's the love of God. That's God's love just touching you. Yep, that's, that's, just, that's just the power and the very presence of God, sweetheart. That's it. Just receive. Flows all through her. All through her. In Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you so much. For my son here, I bless you, Father God, for that that you've spoken. Man, I see a rainbow over you. There's a promise that God made to a lady. I don't know if it's your mother. I just see a lady. God made a lady a promise concerning you. There's a lady. I don't know if it's mother, aunt, grandmother. He didn't say. But God made them a promise concerning your life. And God said, I'm going to do my part. He just needs you to do yours. So, Father, in part, stir a fire in him, I pray. In Jesus' name. That's just the presence of God. That's all. That's just his power. That's just his power. Oh, yes. I know you feel it. I know it is strong. Fire in Jesus' name. Crown him, touch him for your glory in Jesus' name. Whew. Glory. 
Lift your hands, sweetheart. Close your eyes. Father, I bless you. I thank you. I praise you. There are some very strong demonic forces that have come against you and come against your mind to take you away from here, literally away from this life. The devil doesn't want you alive, and I'm going to tell you why. Because the devil knows the threat you can be to him. You can be a literal threat to the enemy because you have an influence in this world. You can bring people out of some very dark places into the very presence and kingdom of God. And God wants to use you. There are two angels behind you right now. The presence of God is coming on you. Right this very moment. God said, I'm going to use you. He said, oh, you've seen dark places. You can see people. And when you see them, you can size them up just like that. And it's not judging them. God gifted that to you. I hear him say, even as a little girl, even as a little girl. And God said, now I'm going to use you because you've given yourself to me. Go get them and bring them to me. From the darkest, gloomiest places. Hallelujah. Go get them and bring them to me. Close your eyes. Stir that fire. Where is Starlet? Is she in here? Come, come, come. Put your right hand in her belly. Right there. Father, stir it up in her. Now. Now. In Jesus' name. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Bless her with the favor and everything else she needs for your glory. Fire all over her and for her. For your glory, Lord. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Uh-huh. Oh, it's, it's, that's just him flowing. That's just him flowing through you. Whew. Flows all through you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Close your eyes. Father, I thank you. I hear God saying you Jesus. are going to give up something for him and he's saying it like this you're going to give up something for me and I'm going to replace it with something you've been wanting for decades you're going to give up something for me and I'm going to give you something you've been wanting for decades and God said I'm taking worry all the way off of your head I'm taking it all the way off Thank you, Lord. Yes. Jesus. I hear children. Yes, Lord. Jesus. And I hear blessings abundantly. Jesus. And so, Father, I thank you for what you've spoken. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you said. Oh, yes, Lord. And I impart to him. Oh, yes, give him your fire. Now, in Jesus' name. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You may return to your seats. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. You know, God has been, has been giving me names and some of the people I've been meeting. So I don't know if, if it's somebody in here or somebody in here know or if I'm going to meet, but he's been saying this name. I don't know if it is a, if it is your given name or if it's a nickname or what, but Patty. He's been saying Patty. Anybody know a Patty? I don't know if I'm going to meet her or, well, let me just see. You know a Patty. Who, who is Patty? My neighbor now. Your mom's neighbor now. Is, is something going on with her? Because I, I don't have a word until I hear what's going on. That's just how my gift works. I have no clue. He just said a name. I don't know nothing other than that. Pretty close. I know like some personal stuff going on within her family. Personal stuff going on in her family? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. No, I don't want you to say that. All right. Good. Who else had their, their hand up? Okay. Somebody over here. Yes. Patty. I mean, are you like, you know her, know her like now? Okay. What's going on with Patty? Her mother is ill. She has cancer. Where, where do they live here? No, they live in St. Thomas. 
live in St. George. And her mother, do, do you know her mother's name? Laverne. Laverne? Okay, all right. And who is your patty? A lady we met at AHOP, we ministered to her, me and Sierra. Okay, it's, it's a light that just came up. It's, oh, you, you felt it too? You felt it too? This, I'm going to pray for the other patties now, I promise you. I'm going to pray. But as soon as you said it, it's this light. And you know, look at you getting gifts and stuff. You must be reading Revelation every day. As soon as you said it, she said, that's it. I felt that light just came. All right, go, what's going on with yeah, this patty? Um, we led her to the Lord, and she was really broken up. And I, I what do you mean broken up? Crying? She, yeah, she, she was. It was some stuff in there, and so I was like, do you need any healing? And she said, I need a healing in my heart because her daughter's baby got taken because her daughter was on drugs. And so they don't know where the, the daughter, the baby is in foster care. And then she, she didn't need, needed money and, you know, just for God to bring her back up. And she's trying to make some changes, too. She grew up Catholic, so she didn't know anything about God. So she does now. But probably yeah, we just talked about that this morning, Catholic. Yeah. Okay, did you get her number or any, you good? This was my daughter. <laughs> Thank you. All right, come here and stand up. Put your hands out like this, like that. Close your eyes. Father, give her exactly what to say to her in Jesus' name. Impart it all to her in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, for the other patties, we bring them before you in Jesus' name. Yes. Father, speak your word to the situations. Just as we learned this morning, speak your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. What about Bernard? The Lord said Bernard after I prayed for her. Anybody, you know a Bernard? That's your uncle. What's going on with Bernard? Well, you know, his wife had passed away last year. Oh, his wife passed away last year. All right, and what, is that about all? Yeah. I mean, I'm not belittling that. I'm just asking, is there more? That's all you know about Bernard. You put your, you know Bernard? Both of y'all have uncles named Bernard, and both of y'all on the dance, then y'all just dance this. <laughs> You know, God trips me out how he confirms stuff like this. Both of y'all dance, both of y'all got uncles named Bernard, but you don't know what's going on. Who else knows of Bernard? You do? What's going on? Your uncle is Bernard? God trips me out sometimes. He just does. I love this. What's going on with Bernard? Uh-huh. All right, your left hand. Come, 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 come. All right, just hold your left hand out. Close your eyes. I want you to lay hands. Ask him first, can you lay hands on him, all right? Just give him that right there, all right? All right, now keep this hand holy. We keep both hands holy, <laughs> but especially this one. Don't you do nothing with this hand until you pray for that boy. Look at me, you ain't praying. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? You know you better keep both of them holy, but you hear what I'm saying. I give him what I just gave you. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Bernard? Co worker. Two co workers. Uncles and co workers. Some type of diabetes. Oh, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Right there, right there, right there, right there. He just put something in your heart. You're going to tell him something to do that's going to, it's going to lead, lead him to, now I, I see needles. It's going to lead him to pills and then from that to something else so he can get fully, fully, fully delivered from diabetes. But it's something you're going to tell him. Something you're going to tell him. I don't know if it's exercise. I don't know if it's some special. I have no clue. I just gave you the part I know. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Your Uncle Bernard. Yes, sir. Um, do you know if anything's going on with him? Or? Yes, he's, um, he's always been a strong guy in our family, leader of our family, and all. Mm -hmm. He's having a problem with his legs. His legs? Yes, he, he had an accident many years ago, and his legs just locked up. Now he's getting older, he's limping with that same leg. Mm hmm. Okay. What's the relationship between y'all two? Oh, y'all husband and wife, good, perfect. Cause God told me to have both of y'all to go pray. I ain't know what relationship it was. Like, <laughs> hey, I don't know, all right? 22 years. How many? 22, 22 years. 22 years, God bless. Father, I thank you so much for this husband and wife. Ooh, ooh, Jesus. ooh, 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 ooh. Jesus. Ooh, I feel, ooh, I feel like I'm pumping gas. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, how y'all? God is, ah, he's giving you. Ah, he's giving y'all what, what, what Uncle Bernard needs. Ah, ah. Thank you. Y'all feel it going in. Thank you. Okay. It's full now. Thank you, Lord. Please go pray for him with boldness, expecting nothing but healing. Thank you, Father. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's it. I love y'all. God bless you.